140 The Resurrection of the Lord Easter Sunday Presence of God, Father is in Jesus, make me worthy to share in the joy of your resurrection. Meditation 1. This is the day which the Lord hath made, let us be glad, and rejoice therein our be. This is the most excellent day, the happiest day in the whole year, because it is the day when Christ, our Pash, has been sacrificed. Christmas, too, is a joyous feast, but whereas Christmas vibrates with a characteristic note of sweetness, the Paschal Solemnity resounds with an unmistakable note of triumph. It is joy for the triumph of Christ for his victory. The liturgy of the Mass shows us this paschal joy, under two aspects joy in truth, ep. 1 Cor 5, 7.8, and joy in charity, post-communion. Joy in truth, according to the vibrant admonition of St. Paul. Let us celebrate the feast, not with old leaven, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In this world there are many ephemeral joys, based on fragile, insecure foundations. But the paschal joy is solidly grounded on the knowledge that we are in the truth, the truth which Christ brought to the world, and which he confirmed by his resurrection. The resurrection tells us that our faith is not in vain, that our hope is not founded on a dead man but on living one, the living one par excellence, whose life is so strong that it vivifies, in time, as in eternity, all those who believe in him. I am the resurrection and the life, he that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live Jn 11, 25. Joy in truth, for only sincere, and upright souls who seek the truth lovingly, and, still more, do the truth can fully rejoice in the resurrection. We are sincere when we recognize ourselves for what we are, with all our faults, deficiencies, and need for conversion. From this knowledge of our misery springs the sincere resolve to purify ourselves of the old leaven of the passions in order to be renewed completely in the risen Christ. Truth, however, must be accomplished in charity veritatem patience in caritatem, doing the truth in charity, f4, 15, therefore the post-communion prayer that is placed on our lips is more timely than ever pour forth upon us, O Lord the spirit of thy love, to make us of one heart. Without unity and mutual charity there can be no real paschal joy. 2. The Gospel, M.K. 16, 1-7, places before our eyes the faithful holy women who, at the first rays of the Sunday dawn, run to the sepulchre, and on the way, wonder, who will roll back the stone from the door of the sepulchre for us? This preoccupation, although it is well justified on account of the size and weight of the stone, does not deter them from proceeding with their plans. They are too much taken up with the desire of finding Jesus. And behold, hardly have they arrived when they see the stone rolled back. They enter the two men find an angel, who greets them with the glad announcement, He is risen, he is not here. At this time, Jesus does not let himself be found or seen, but a little later, when, in obedience to the command of the angel, the women leave the tomb to bring the news to the disciples, he will appear before them saying, All hail! MT 28, 9, and their joy will be overwhelming. We, too, have a keen desire to find the Lord. Perhaps we have been seeking him for many long years. Further, 
this desire may have been accompanied by serious preoccupation with the question of how we might rid ourselves of the obstacles and roll away from our souls the stone which has prevented us thus far from finding the Lord, from giving ourselves entirely to him, and from letting him triumph in us precisely. Because we want to find the Lord, we have already overcome many obstacles. Sustained by his grace, Divine Providence has helped us roll away many stones, overcome many difficulties. Nevertheless, the search for God is progressive and must be maintained during our whole life. For this reason, following the example of the holy women, we must always have a holy preoccupation about finding the Lord a preoccupation which will make us industrious and diligent in seeking him, and at the same time confident of the divine aid, since the Lord will certainly take care that we arrive where our own strength could never bring us, because he will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Every year Easter marks a time of renewal in our spiritual life, in our search for God. Every year we ascend the path toward him in Avitate Vita, in newness of life. Rom 6, 4. Colloquy Lord Jesus, good and gentle Jesus, who deign to die for our sins, and to rise for our justification, I beg you, by your glorious resurrection, to bring me out of the sepulchre of my vices and sins, so that I may merit to have a real share in your resurrection. O most kind Lord, who ascended to heaven in the triumph of your glory, and are seated at the right hand of the Father, you, who are all powerful, raise me up to you, so that I may run in the odor of your ointments, run without slackening, while you call, and guide me my soul thirsts, draw me to the divine spring of eternal satiety, lift me out of the abyss toward this living spring, so that I may drink as much as I can of it, and live on it forever, O oh my God, my life. I pray you, Lord, give my soul the wings of an eagle, that I may fly without weakening, fly, until I reach the splendor of your glory. There, you will feed me on your secrets at the table of the heavenly citizens, in the place of your pash, near the celestial fount of eternal satiety. Let my heart rest in you, my heart which resembles a great ocean, agitated by tumultuous waves. When shall I see you, O precious, long-desired, Amiable Lord? When shall I appear before your face? When shall I be satiated with your beauty? When will you take me out of this dark prison that I may confess your name without being confused any longer? What shall I do? A wretch loaded down with the chains of my human condition. What shall I do? As long as we are in the body, we are journeying toward the Lord. We have not here a lasting dwelling, but we seek a future city, for our homeland is in heaven. As long as I carry about with me these fragile members, give me the grace, O Lord, to cling to you, for he who adheres to the Lord is one spirit with him, St. Augustine.